Recently I have seen quite a lot of videos pop up about diffusion filters being used in photography, such as for example the Tiffin Pro Mist filter or the Moment Cinebloom filter. And these filters are mainly marketed towards digital photographers to kind of take away the clinical sharpness of digital images to make them appear more organic and natural looking, or some would even say to make them look more film-like. So naturally, as a film shooter myself, I was wondering if these filters would make any sense when actually shooting film. So today in this video we are going to try that out. And I decided to go for a rather systematic approach and conduct an experimental study, so to speak. Because in this video we will take four images of the same scenes every time, with and without a promised filter, once on color and once on black and white film, so that we can compare all four scenarios. These mist filters, and by the way I'm kind of happy that we are talking about them in English, because in German these mist filter would mean something completely different. But these mist filters are also popularly used during night scenes, because they heavily diffuse light sources. But to kind of further diversify this test or this study, I decided to choose a very broad range of different situations. So we will have night scenes, but we will also have daylight or daytime scenes indoors and outdoors. Just a quick disclaimer, I am just one individual person, I am not a clinical lab, and the results may vary a lot depending on the camera, on the filter and on the film you use. So for my trial here I am using my Bronica ETRSI, which is a medium format film camera, I am using a Tiffin Black Pro Mist filter in the one quarter strength and I am using two different color and black and white films. Namely, this was Fuji Pro 400H, rest in peace, as well as Kodak Portra 160VC, rest in peace, and Ilford XP2 and Ilford FP4. And the set of images, with and without the filter, were always exposed in the exact same way and were scanned in with the exact same settings. So all of the differences we should be able to see should basically be because of the filter. So without any further ado, I have my laptop here and all the images scanned, so let's jump right in. To start with the daytime shots first, I took images of my infamous cactus here, which I kind of get asked about unproportionately much and I don't really know why, it's just a cactus. But you can clearly see a slightly decrease of contrast in both the black and white and the color images taken with the promised filter, and also a slightly cooler tint to the color image. The blacks appear a bit kind of lighter, but overall I would say the differences are relatively subtle. And next we have four shots of my little reading corner, and here I would say we have a similar picture with raised blacks, a slight decrease of contrast, and it almost looks like a maybe smoky candle might have covered the room in a thin layer of fog. And uh, here again I would say that the difference is a bit more visible on the color than on the black and white images. And overall the differences are relatively subtle. And next we have this one in a lifetime opportunity where my cat Momo is sitting still enough so that I was able to take four shots in a row without her suddenly disappearing or putting her butt in my face. So as you can see here we kind of have the same effect. So I think her portrait looks a bit softer and it makes the background appear a bit more creamy and hazy with the filter on, which at least I think works quite well when we have a subject in focus rather than only a plain scene, as with the prior shots. Also I think it's awesome that I chose Momo as a model because here we can perfectly compare skin tones, <laughs> but at least we can say that the fur tones look majestic in all four images. But since Momo is a black cat, I think um, here it really shows how much lighter the blacks appear with the filter on. Also can we please appreciate the little derp face of her looking like she's in the middle of a sneeze for a second? But come on, of course I also took a proper human portrait. And here the promised filter actually really surprised me. Because straight out of the kind of scanner I thought that the image without the filter already looked pretty good. But when I saw the image with the filter I think it looked even a tiny notch better. But what I noticed is that in the especially color image without the filter, the background appears a bit harsh in comparison to the subject. So what I think the filter does pretty well is to kind of soften out the overall tones 
and make for a great flow between the subject and the background. In the black and white images it looks pretty similar but I think we also lose a little bit of the micro contrast and the range of darker tones in the shadows. And here on the images of the flowers I think you can see that the saturation on the color also seems to be a bit decreased with the filter on. This comes down to personal preference and this you know kind of more muted look is something that can be achieved in the scan if you scan the image in more flat or in post-processing by adjusting the curve but I personally kind of like the more muted tones and I think it's cool that you get this look straight out of the scanner with the filter on. And with the black and white images I don't see a big difference here but that might also be because the sun, the light source, was behind me and didn't really kind of affect the image too much. What most people probably associate with promised filters are nighttime scenes. So let's see how these filters perform during the night. Straight away we can see that the effect is definitely more dominant during the nighttime compared to the daytime shots and we have pretty heavily washed out blacks and a more visible kind of diffused puff around the light source. The exact shape of the light source is also harder to see and especially with the pole here we can see that the shape looks a bit more flat and less three-dimensional so to speak. With this image I got super lucky because as I was in the process of taking the four shots the owner came and <laughs> pulled up in his driveway, parked his car. So this explains why there is no car in the black and white and why there is a car in the color shots. And of course he also had to open the window. So I ended up with four completely different images, but I think we can still judge the filter. In this image there are basically two things that I think are worth mentioning. For one, I think with the promised filter the whole scene looks a bit more mysterious and moody. And because of the diffused light, it almost has a kind of Todd Heido vibe to it. But on the other hand, because the light is so diffused, we cannot really recognize the original shape of the light source anymore, which I think is also something very important to take into account. And talking about the shape of the light sources, I think it is even more visible in the next images, where this kind of half broken, half functional street lamp caught my eye. While I think that the more diffused image has something to it, it kind of also is a bit distracting and the images without the diffusion filter in my opinion look a bit more clean and a bit more minimalistic and kind of stress and show better what the point of interest in this image is which is kind of the crack in, in the middle of the street lamp. So sometimes the glow in my opinion can be a bit distracting and you should kind of take with care which image really needs to have this glow and which maybe is better off without. I also took four images of this scene here because it is a pretty extreme scene exposure wise because we have those really bright areas in the parking lot and the almost pitch black areas in the surroundings. And while the black and white images both sadly came out underexposed you can still see very clearly how much lighter the black appears in the one taken with the promised filter. And in the color images you can see that the one with the filter has some cooler and also kind of softer cast to it. And lastly here we have something that I found particularly interesting as I was trying to photograph the rainbow road from Mario Kart and only sadly caught the light trails of Mario and Bowser passing by. But anyway. As you can see here, when stopping down the aperture of your lens, light sources usually create these types of light stars around a light source and depending on how many aperture blades your lens has, it looks a bit different. And I think this is where the photography world is kind of parted into two. Some people who really really like and love those light stars and people who absolutely hate those and I guess I can say that I have not found my place yet but if you are one of the people who absolutely hates them a promise filter is a pretty effective way to get rid of them because the light source is completely diffused and leaves behind this kind of hazy hazy puff and mess of of light without any any visible star but while you gain the kind of diffused light source you do lose on some details especially in the shadows though so while you can see the branches of the tree kind of clearly in the shots taken without the promised filter, in the shot with the promised filter the branches of the tree kind of disappear in the mist 
So I would say it's kind of a trade-off. If you want to have more diffusion and more haze around your image, you will definitely lose some detail. Time for a verdict. What do you think? Do mist filters actually make sense when shooting film? In my own and of course very personal opinion, I would say, yeah, absolutely. Mist filters or diffusion filters do not only take away the sharpness of an image, which is why it might be interesting for digital photographers, but these diffusion filters do also shape and modulate the overall look and appearance of an image, which I think is a good enough reason why it might be interesting and attractive for film photographers as well. However, however, there is of course a footnote to that and I would like to elaborate on that because I think it is not applicable and not suitable for every type of situation or for every motive. For example, for me personally, I didn't get a lot from shooting the Promise filter with black and white film. This is a matter of personal preference, as I said kind of several times throughout the video, but I personally like my black and white images to be punchy and contrasty. And what this filter does is to actually take away the contrast and make the image more flat. So I personally don't think I will use the filter for black and white images, but if you are somebody who is actually looking for this kind of more flat, more muted look on black and white images, the filter might be interesting for you because you will get it kind of straight from the scans and won't have to mess around with the tone curves too much. When it comes to color film though, I think this is where it gets interesting because in my personal opinion, this is where the filter shines. Before conducting this little test, I honestly thought that the filter would only be interesting for nighttime photography, but the daytime shots kind of proved me wrong and I was pretty surprised by the results, especially by the portrait one. I think the vintagey colors, the kind of more muted and more subtle tones worked really in favor because I think the skin tones and the contrast between the subject and the background looked way more coherent and definitely more smooth. Therefore, my personal verdict is that Promist filters are pretty cool and pretty nifty and also something for film shooters. However, I think you should be kind of careful and selective when you use the filter and when you don't. Don't glue it on there because it simply doesn't make every picture immediately better. And also you kind of get a bit tired of the look if all of the images are shot that way. So what I think is a better kind of go-to would be to really choose which images would be enhanced and would benefit from the use of the filter and only use it for that situations. For me personally, I will continue to use this filter for portraits and for nighttime scenes when I want to get rid of the kind of starlights. But other than that, I do think that I will be a bit more conservative in the use of this filter. So let's slowly come to an end here. In total, I used 40 shots for this kind of little experiment. And my hope or my goal was that because I did so, you hopefully won't have to do the same. But I hope that there was something interesting or informative in this video that you might use if you are kind of finding out which scenes or scenarios a promised filter would be useful while shooting film. And that is everything for today. So I would say see you in the next one.